Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So it, it is uh, also my pleasure to be here to present uh, some of you know, the work we have done in the past several years. And uh, in this presentation, first the part, I, I would like to give some uh, high level you know, the, uh, information about the, at the, at the status of the uh, the global energy, energy you know, storage and conversion. And uh, after that, I'm going to give some uh, brief introduction about the, the activity we have, you know, we are, you know, we are doing right now in, in the fuel catalysis and the supercapacitor at the National Research Council of Canada. This slide shows you the uh, some introduction about the, the type of energy at this moment in, uh, in uh, globally, and uh, we can you know cl classify the two kind of uh, the energy, right? One is uh, re re renewable energy, another one is the non-renewable energy. I think the uh, everybody know is the, the you know this the renewable energy including hydropower, bio energy, solar energy. Geothermal uh, energy, wind energy, solar energy, etc. And for the non-renewable non -re energy, including coal and uh, oil, you know, natural gas, etc. For example, the pit means you know some something in the in your north north part of Canada. We have the several meters, you know, dead organics, something like this. And uh, this is the two kind, two types of the energy at this moment. And uh, this slide show you, you know, the, the urgency about our energy consumption. This one show you, you know, the, uh, for example, right now this is, the, uh, this is the type, I give you the full type, major part of the energy source. Uh, this is the fossil, fossil fuel, right? It's, uh, one is natural gas, oil, uh, coal, and, uh, and uh, Uranium, and uh, this one is for the uh, nuclear power, right? This one is the total world reservoir about this all the uh, all the fuel here, and uh, here is the uh, world usage per year, at the current you know uh, uh, consumption rate. Uh, for example, this one is for for the for the natural gas. Gas we got around three thousand billion cubic meters per year. We, we are, we are consuming all, all these things. But according to this rate, how many years we can use, you know, before we use up our energy, non-renewable energy? This one I show you, you know, for example, natural, natural gas is around 2068, another 50 years, 60 years to go. So this is the, this is the calculator about the usage rate, rate at, at this moment. And for the, Oil is around 2047. That's very urgent, right? 40, 40 years? Less than 40 years. That's predicted. And the coal could be longer, 100, more than 100 years. And the nuclear is around 100, 100, you know, 50 years. But if, if we, at the most, if we can increase our, our fuel, you know, utilization, for your efficiency, Double efficiency, this one should be double, right? It's anyway, if you, even you double the, 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 you double the efficiency, the problem is still, you know, within 300 years. Within 300 years, the, the, all the fossil fuel gone. So what are we going to do with three, 300 years, actually, compared to the, the, the whole history of the, the our global is nothing, right? Just like this, it's gone. So that's very urgent about the energy. And uh, let's talk about, uh, people talk about uh, clean energy. What's, what's about the clean energy? Sustainable energy. Sustainable energy, including, you know, we just talk about the solar energy, geothermal energy, wind energy, tidal energy, uh, wheel energy, and ocean thermal energy con conversion. This kind of energy, right? But, uh, you know, this in the, this one show you the, the whole you know, energy, you know, the percentage of the clean energy. Actually, it's, 
is only around you know the 25 percent, uh, you know 20, 25 percent. But uh, we see 25 percent, 75, 77 percent is from the bio energy. You mean the bio energy is from all tree and uh, all grass and everything and a plant on the earth. But this one, I think, is not a really clean energy. Because when you convert this kind of thing to the useful energy, you need a, a very, very complicated chemical process. That chemical process then releases the pollution, right, to the, to the, to the earth. That's the thing. Real, real, you know, the clean energy is this one. This, this is the real clean energy. Only how many percent? I couldn't say. It's 15 percent. Uh, that's this total, something like this. So actually, the clean energy is a very small portion. But after 300 years, but the only usable energy is this part, even small portion. Right? That means uh, we need to increase this, this small portion, right? And uh, for the clean energy, major drawing force, everybody knows, is first that we need a, we need a sustainable, uh, you mankind need a sustainable uh, living and uh, develop, developing, right? Need a sustainable energy supply. And uh, the, you know, the su sustainable living and the de developing of mankind need a sustainable clean environment free of pollution, right? This is the two major driving force to, you know, to push, we go to the clean, you know, clean energy, right? That's the, and uh, however, at this moment, the clean energy face several very, very large challenges. You know, first is, uh, is, uh, is the insufficient reliability, you know, the, Electricity, for example, you use wind energy, you, you use the solar energy. Then, then if, you know, how about in the, in the, in the day, it's like, like, you know, in the yesterday, it's, it's a very good day, you know, sunlight day. No wind, no, you know, that's the, if you use the wind energy, that's no energy, right? For the, for the, you know, cloudy day, you don't have a sunlight. That's the something like this. Is the insus, insus, insufficient reliability. Second is uh, is the difficult transfer, tra you know, trans uh, you know, transmission and uh, distribution, because the, those kind of clean energy is localized, right? It's localized. And the third thing is uh, is the is unbalanced uh, integration of renewable on the power grid. You know, we right now, for example, we have if we, if we produce the the so huge amount of electricity use the wind energy or use the solar, but for all the grid, they don't allow you to, to put your, your electricity into the grid, right? You can interrupt their, their grid, right? Then, the, then you need, that's why, you know, DOE found a big program on the smart grid. That means you can put your energy into the grid at any time they need. And the last one is the, High capital cost, the you know equipment facility very expensive at this moment, right? That's the and uh, how many type of you know clean energy storage and conversion? Here this slide show you the several type. First type of electrochemical technology. You know everybody you use the LED battery and the fuel cell supercapacitor and the hydrogen. Uh, CO2, you know, uh, reduction, uh, etc. This kind of called electrochemical uh, technology. Second part is is the called flywheel. You know, you use extra energy. You know, you run a very big the flywheel. Then the, why you why you know your the energy is no energy. Then flywheel the still going then the convert to energy. And the third is the compressed air. You use the the actual uh, you know, electricity to compress air to very high pressure, then uh, when you use it, just release. Then, for example, we use the, in Europe, there is a company develop a car, use the compressed air, uh, compressed air, right, to drive the car. They climb, they can go 100, 100 kilometers, right? And, uh, sorry, and, uh, and uh, also pump the hydroelectricity 
For example, in the in the not the rush hour, we don't need electricity, but your your the water, you know, the, in the in the reservoir still, uh, you need you need to release the water. Otherwise, it damage the 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 dam. Then the, uh, how they do? They just use the extra electricity to pump back the water. Then uh, this kind of storage things, and also you know the uh, manage uh, you know magnetic uh, magnetic superconductor and uh, uh, and also ice mailing and utility financing etc. Those kind of the, uh, you know the for the energy storage and the conversion. But I would say you know at this moment electrochemical technology are proved as the most feasible and uh, effective way in clean energy storage and conversion. What kind of you know, electrochemical technology? That's the, at least the several of them. You know, for example, here, you, know, you, you may be familiar with fuel cell. You may be familiar with the lithium-ion battery used in your cell phone. And uh, you, you, you familiar with the supercapacitor. And uh, also, this, this kind of technology is called you know, electrochemical technology. And uh, what's, the, what's the principle for the electrochemical conversion and the storage? That's the electrochemical, you know, is as actually it's an electrochemical device reactor. You put, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, electricity in, then store in the chemical in the, in the side, inside the, uh, the battery, uh, in, and uh, convert to, to, to chemical energy. Then if you have chemical energy, you can through this device convert to electric, electrical energy. That's the basic you know, electrochemical principle for the energy storage and the conversion. And uh, for the electrochemical application, power range actually is a very, very wide power range. For example, you can use the, use the, in, the in the bus. In the bus, even now they use the in the in the in the in the, in the railway. You know this bus. This need a fuel cell, and you use small car fuel cell and the battery and the laptop, computer, cell phone and the chips, etc. This the electrochemical method is is very wide power region, and what's the advantage of the the clean electrochemical clean energy storage and conversion? And the first is, is the wide variety of application in stationary transportation and also the portable microelectronics. And the second is the wide variety of power energy density region. That's very important. And mo mo mobile, you know, you can carry on the energy to anywhere you want, right, you desire. High, high you know, storage conversion efficiency. For the electrochemical conversion, can be reached to 40 to 95 percent, but for the uh, combustion uh, conversion, you only can reach 30 something in the room temperature, right? This is the bigger advantage, and also rechargeable and uh, environmental friendly. This kind of, uh, in the electrochemical clear energy storage and conversion, there is a famous figure they call the you know region plot. That's the power density, power density, and uh, worse the well, what's as the energy uh, density? You know, some electrochemical device, for example, fuel cell, they have 1,000, uh, you know, uh, watt hour per kilo, kilogram. And uh, this one, energy density is uh, power density around, uh, you know, the uh, 100, something like this. For the supercapacitor, they have high power density, but a low energy density, right? Lithium ion battery in the middle side, but you see the fuel there is, is good, right? This is actually, in terms of both power density and energy density, they are, they are very good. And uh, right now is the future target for the, for the electrochemical device is here. They call the thousand and thousand. One thousand power density and one thousand energy density. This is the big challenge from this one move, move up. And the fuel there could be, you know, close, but still need further improvement. And another big advantage is that in the future, you know, smart grid, electrochemical conversion and storage would be a central part. You know, here you have, 
you know, clean energy, you know, wind and solar energy, you convert to uh, uh, electricity and store into electrochemical system, then the release to the end user. That's the, you know, the uh, electrochemical energy storage conversion will be a central component in future smart grid. And uh, you know the, uh, how we do it in the future. Future is seems, you know, this is the strategy in right now, Germany. Uh, they are, they are, they are using this, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, strategy. Because G Germany, they are claiming in 2022, they're going to get rid of nuclear, nuclear, uh, you know, power. But their strategy is use the clean energy source, then storage in the, free, in the for example, produce hydrogen, use fuel cell to deliver to the user. Then also this storage in the battery and the super capacitor to use the, so this is the strategy for them. Now I give some, you know, the conclusion about the electrochemical uh, clean energy storage and the conversion. First, the, you know, the uh, fuel cell, in particular, polymer electro memory fuel cell for automobile application. That's the one you know, the re research and the developers, uh, you know, direction, very important direction. And uh, this is why uh, I will give you more about the fuel cell things in later on. Another second direction is metal air battery, in particular, lithium air and zinc air uh, for automobile application. You can see that everything is actually right now is urgent things are for automobile application. And the third is the lithium sulfur battery. That's the, and the first thing is super capacitor for automobile application. And then the last one is photoelectrochemical cell for hydrogen generation. That's the, you know, four direction in my personal opinion at this moment and also for future research direction. And uh, let's talk about the fuel cell, okay, particularly palm fuel cell. Palm fuel cell, you know, we developed over, oh, you know, several decades, but till today, we still did not see, you know, the real commercialization yet. What's the, what's the problem? What's the challenge? The major challenge for palm fuel cell is there are two major challenges. One is the cost fact. Cost is very expensive. For example, use a platinum catalyst, right? And uh, second is the reliability. You know, for many application, only you know fifty percent of the target. For example, for automobile application, you need five thousand hour, you know, running. But right now, it's the best one. You know, you in 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 a barla, and they are still, they can get you know three three thousand something like like this, and also. Uh, there are some little you know, challenges right now. Is uh, the major challenge is uh, the first of the two, and uh, uh, for the pump fuser material, you see the two challenges basically focus on the material. So pump fuel key material breakthrough is the, is the high priority in order to reach the uh, real commercialization. That's the you know key material including you know catalyst, memory. And the GDL, this is this less bipolar plate, but the major is the catalyst and the, and the memory. And uh, for the for the catalyst part, how to further increase the catalyst activity for the fuel cell oxygen reduction? That's the major things. And uh, right now, for the catalyst part, you know, we can develop a lot, a lot of catalysts. For example, you know, some fancy structure for the cochlear structure and. Uh, Structure there is the this the activity is the, is equal to turn uh, turnover frequency times you know electronic uh, you know charge times uh, uh, you know active surface area density surface area density and uh, active side density then this the you know uh, amp per you know per cubic centimeter that's the formula to uh, to you know define the activity. But right now you see the activity from you know uh, beginning now is can reach 200, 2,800 for the TOF. But the problem is this kind of in the catalyst, even the structure is very very 
fencing, but the problem is, is the structural retention. Although they have very high activity, but when you put it into the fuel cell, you know, all the structure gone, you know, be, you know, back to something like here. This practical one is around 25. This is the platinum electro. And recently, you know, uh, you know, we have the non-noble metal cat non-platinum catalyst. For example, Professor Zheng Wei Chen and uh, Professor Dodlet, uh, Prof Professor, you know, Zelani, they are doing they get the, the best performance in the world for the non-noble metal catalyst. And uh, from NRC, at the NRC, we have a, a group who are working on the pump fuel cell cat uh, uh, you know, catalysis. And in the last seven years, we have synthesis, you know, a series of catalysts, that, you know, for example, alloy catalysts, that, you know, a microcycle, microcycle catalysts, that, you know, chocogenide and uh, middle porous carbon support, you know, non, non noble metal catalysts. This kind of, we, uh, in the past, you know, several years, we are focused on uh, uh, this kind of research. And, uh, uh, for example, I show you an example. This uh, we see this is the platinum cobalt, you know, alloy catalyst with the fancy structure. For example, here is uh, is the, the structure, holy structure with uh, inside uh, empty, and then you can get a very high uh, high the surface area and uh, this kind of catalyst. And also we see this is some you know non carbon supported catalyst. For example, here is not. Uh, is ceramic uh, nano, nano fiber, you know, uh, you know, coated with uh, with the platinum, you know, particle for the for the uh, catalyst. This is the very high, you know, activity. And uh, also we did some cochlear structure. You see the, this one, you know, this is the TM picture. You can see inside is uh, this uh, this uh, sphere particle. Inside is uh, is the is ruthenium, ruthenium, and also is platinum. This one is particularly good for the zero tolerance. You know, zero tolerance is, is when you put this kind of catalyst, the zero, zero, zero tolerance become you know, very, very high. This is a cochlear structure catalyst. For the, uh, we are, we are also uh, a lot of work on the new catalyst support. You know, right now is uh, for the catalyst in order to increase the catalyst surface, uh, you know, activity. But you need, uh, you know, the, the catalyst support will be porous and also big surface area. But in the, in the uh, conventional, you know, catalyst layer inside, actually inside the deeper area, you some, you know, electrolyte coating couldn't reach those area, you couldn't get a, the, this part is totally dead area. It's not active. Uh, the, the main idea, we, we, since it's some you know, carbon pore, uh, all the pore inside the particle is connected to you know, each other, is something like a channel. In this way, is, uh, we can do the, the control the synthesis of such a carbon structure and use our unique technology called ultrasonic spring paralysis. That's the instrument we do. Then the advantage for this instrument we can do, we can, you know, uh, we can synthesize the, uh, you know, spheric, spheric particle, you know, facilitate the electrofabrication, and the surface area controllable, and, uh, you know, the, the uh, porosity, uh, porosity, and also can be, you know, the, uh, adjustable. And, uh, uh, this one can be, you know, uh, 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 scale up for mass production. And uh, this is the example of all the, 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 you know, support particle. This is the one particle I show you. You see the particle there is, uh, on the surface there is some, a, a lot of, you know, regular, very regular pores, right? This, uh, is this one, you know, each pore you can, uh, some, you know, you can adjust the pore, for example, uh, the, the specific area can be to reach to 2,000 square meter per gram, and the porosity can be go to particle size to 1 to 100 nanometer. Power volume can be go to far. This is pretty pretty hard. This this the this the uh, you know a uh, uh, particle coated with platinum catalyst on the on the on the surface, and uh, this show you the 
we coat, coated the platinum catalyst on this one for the oxygen reduction. You can get you know, around 30 millivolt shift to the positive, positive you know, uh, potential, that which is considered is very big. And uh, also this is another you know, platinum cobalt alloy catalyst we synthesized. And uh, this kind of metal porous carbon has found uh, many applications. For example, in supercapacitor, and uh, in lithium ion battery, and uh, hydrogen storage, and also drug delivery. This, uh, so another approach we, are, we, 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 have, we are doing right now is the non-noble metal catalyst. Just the, you know, we, are, we have some collaboration with Zhong Wei, and in this area, non-noble metal catalyst. Why we do non-noble catalyst? Because the platinum price is too high. For example, to this slide show you the, the show you the price increase. Right now it's increased to thousand dollars per ounce. But uh, you know, in the per, in the last uh, you know uh, one decade, a lot of people try to reduce the platinum loading. But the problem is you reduce platinum loading from 1992 2.0 milligram per square centimeter. Right now, you can go to 0 0.4, something like recently just this number, or 0 0.2. But since 1992 to 2010, you know, the, the, the price increased. That means that your effort on the platinum reduction is totally, you know, offset by the platinum price increase, right? And uh, some people say, you know, we can do the platinum use Platinum recycle, you know, when the fuel cell car is gone, we recycle the platinum. But problem at this moment, the re recover, you know, technology, recycle technology, the efficiency only around, uh, around 95%. That means every time you recycle, 5% is gone. Finally, you know, platinum is gone, right? So how to increase the non of metal catalyst uh, activity? Because at this moment, Nano, uh, the performance of non-noble metal catalyst compared to uh, platinum catalyst is still low. It's still not comparable. And how we, we improve that? And uh, there is a three way uh, summary. First, uh, you know, we need an active side optimization. Second, uh, we, we need the material structure optimization. Third is uh, fuel cell MEA optimization. That's the third way we're going to do. And uh, we are, we are uh, doing some self-supporting use of our unique technology. This one you show is, is, uh, is a, a middle pulse uh, sphere, but this sphere actually is not a carbon. It's the is iron and nitrogen, non-noble metal catalyst. The whole thing is the, the self-supported catalyst. And uh, this is the TM picture about one of our metal, or the catalyst, and uh, we we got the uh, oxygen reduction. You know the testing about this one. We also develop some, you know, bimetal you know catalyst. Coming on the future pump fuel cell, you know, catalyst. First, the, you know the supported platinum based in alloy catalyst. Uh, right now, it should be the near future you know, uh, direction in order to meet the requirement of pump fuel cell early commercialization. How, however, non-carbon non support, non-carbon support platinum alloy catalyst are the priority. That's why you know, in the last three years, we, we got the big money to develop, we see not to develop the non-carbon non support catalyst. And uh, for the future pump fuel cell, my another may not only rely on the platinum-based based catalyst for commercialization. That's not, not sustainable. And uh, it, it is only the middle-term middle or demo solution. And uh, for the long-term sustainable commercialization, I think non-noble catalyst should be the direction, the major efforts. So that's the following this, this the uh, understanding the, uh, achieved on the platinum-based catalyst uh, is useful, but we are will become a history. If you use a non-noble metal catalyst, you need to get the new theory and a new understanding about this. This is the platinum, this is the, the fuel synthesis. 
Let's talk about uh, you know some activities for the supercapacitor in our in in in, in uh, the NRC. And uh, what's called uh, you know the the supercapacitor? What's the different as uh, the supercapacitor? First, uh, you know the supercapacitor have much high you know power density. The power, how much high power density? Because it delivers deliver the, the energy immediately within second. You know all the charges de delivered. That's a very high power density, and also the, uh, the you know this, it is the for the double layer uh, supercapacitor is not a Faradic process. The charge and the discharge rate could be very very fast. You know with within one second you know you charge whole thing, and with with one second you discharge charge everything. So this is the uh, different with the battery. Battery you need to charge several hours, right? The maximum two hours is you know the best one. So for the supercapacitor, you only need a second. And the third one, you know the uh, third uh, another advantage is the uh, uh, supercapacitor is 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 you know the the uh, cyclability is very very high. You know it uh, could be one reach some good one can reach one million times. But but how, how for your battery you only can reach around. Uh, you know the uh, uh, thousand time. You know some some that thousand time is some good battery, better battery maybe one hundred or two three hundred times. So that's that's the one. And uh, uh, there are several. You know the uh, you know I don't want to read through all of them. That's the different with the battery. And uh, what's the advantage of the, of the things? You know uh, as we talked before in you know, uh, supercapacitor is uh, is. Uh, uh, is uh, you know the power density is is very high you see here, uh, that, but uh, the energy density is very very low right, but uh, the, this uh, that uh, advantage is very several big advantage. First is uh, I just talk about the cycle ability, cycle life is very very high, and uh, also the uh, density you know the power density is very high, and uh, uh, you know the. Uh, the temperature, temperature operation regions were very wide, and uh, also the, you know, is, uh, I couldn't see. Sorry, I didn't bring my black glass. You know, also is the if the the supercapacitor used in the, in the car in your car, this can recover the, the energy. When you when you when you uh, break your car, then the, there is device then the, charge the supercapacitor. Then when you the accelerate your car, then the, the energy stored in the in the in the supercapacitor release immediately. In this case, you can improve the efficiency at this moment five, around five percent, something like this. And that's the and uh, also other you know uh, um, you know the advantage and also the, the system is simple, relatively simple compared to fuel cell and other battery. And also environment friendly. That's the major, major, other, other, uh, major, you know, advantage. However, there are some disadvantage, some challenges, at, at this moment for the for the uh, supercapacitor. First is low energy density. The energy density right now is the best one is uh, is around five. You know, five. Uh, or, uh, one hour per, uh, per kilogram. That's the why it's low compared to other battery. For example, lithium battery, you can reach the 100, right? 200. But this one only five. So five, I said five is is best. Normally for commercialized products, around two or four, something like this. And uh, also the, the production, you know, the cost, a little bit high cost. Of course, this is compared to the to the lead acid uh, lead acid battery, not compared to lithium, right? And uh, for the supercapacitor, is what's the solution for the challenge? And uh, there are two major solutions. One is to develop the electro material, high capacity material, to increase the energy density. Second one is uh, the increase the high cell voltage. You know the you know the super supercapacitor energy density equal to, uh, uh, you know the uh, 0 0.5 times capacitance times cell voltage. 
if you increase the capacitance, or you increase the power, you increase the cell voltage, the energy density getting bigger. That's the two directions, right? And also, the, this is also power density. Another thing is to, to reduce, the, uh, reduce the, the internal resistance, that's the, which is the common sense for the battery. That's the major sense, I think, is this two. Is increase the material capacity and increase the cell voltage. And at the NRC, we are doing uh, uh, some project for the government funding project on the uh, uh, supercapacitor. This is the show you the test the cell. We're doing single cell. Similar uh, like a fuel cell, right? And uh, this is the cyclic wattmetry to get the capacitance and also the cycle. You know the, the the charge and discharge, but you see you can see this one is for the battery. You charge you get a very 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 flat you know curve. But this one you charge is you know is triangle you know sense. That means your super capacitor you need a, an electronic on your cell to make the voltage flat, right? That's the another big uh, another sense extra sense. And uh, also, we did use our technology. We tried uh, uh, several material for the for the supercapacitor electrode <coughs> to increase the, the energy density. Right? We are doing some, you know, the, this kind of is is carbon material, uh, I you know, uh, porphyry material, titanium material, mo mobile uh, sulfur material, etc. This one material we tried. Uh, Capacity. Some material can reach to 300, 300, you know, Faraday per, uh, per gram material, which is very high. And uh, also, we also uh, for the procedure, you know, supercapacitor. We since some, you know, magnesium dioxide material. For example, this this the material we do, you know, with very very high surface area. And also another material we essentially growing the material on the electrode, you know, uh, current collector to get this kind of, you know, sorry, fancy structure. And you see the, all the, the uh, this kind of structure. And uh, all the uh, we recently we did some work on we we are doing some work on the graphene based material. And this one, you know, in the literature can reach to. The material they can reach to you know put in a single cell they can reach to the power density energy density to 100 something which is uh, you know very comparable to the to the uh, to the battery that's the very good sign this show you the characterization for material and uh, cyclic wattmetry and uh, to, to diagnose the material and uh, I give the several points for the supercapacitor. And uh, electrochemical supercapacitor, and uh, they have high power density, and uh, high cycle life, and also environment friendly. And uh, they, they are, you know, they should be the best, you know, complements to the battery and uh, fuel cell. That means uh, if you put the uh, supercapacitor coupled with your battery, you can increase the battery's you know, uh, uh, love time around five times. That's the, that's the you know, advantage we talk about. And the second one, uh, one couple, uh, couple with the battery fuel cell, love time can be increased five times. And the supercapacitor, uh, idea for the power, uh, you know, vehicle acceleration. And also for the gener regeneration the, the brake. And uh, this one is impossible for the, for the for the battery, for the uh, other battery, lithium ion battery, right? Another thing is a breakthrough in both an, uh, electric, e electrode and the electrolyte material is necessary at this moment to increase the supercapacitor energy density and uh, to, in order to match with the battery of fuel cell. And uh, if, fuel, uh, if uh, supercapacitor energy density can be higher than 150, one hour per kilo, kilo uh, gram, it will be able to replace other battery. That's the direction and also hope for the supercapacitor. That's the why you know, in recent two years, supercapacitor getting 
uh, research and development getting very high in the, in the cutting edge research. OK, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Any questions? Conductivity is dependent, you know, uh, when you just, uh, you know, get the, the sample out, conductivity is not, not very good. But uh, what do we do, because we are, if you, you do the catalyst support, you need uh, the surface is hydro, hydrophobic, philic, and also conductivity is very high, right? We just, uh, you know, treat this one in the, in the very, very high concentrated acid. Yeah. It's very close, uh, very close to our carbon support. Oh, like yeah. 20, 20. Another 20, I think less than 20. Oh, less, than. Le less than 20, yeah. Yes, that's the second part of the catalyst. We're doing the non-noble metal catalyst. You see this one? We're doing non-noble catalyst. This, this is the non-noble metal catalyst. Oh, so non-noble yeah. is that? It's uh, non-platinum. We use the iron cobalt. Yes. And uh, it turns out it has very high tolerance and very low energy density. Yes. And is there any way, any strategy you think you have to improve the energy density of the supercapacitor? Automatically, electrode thickness will have. Uh, yes, we are doing the, you know, uh, why the energy density is low? Because it's the, it's the double layer. Physical storage energy, right? Every particle, for example, you know, every carbon particle they carry on one one charge, right? That's the very low. But if you use the electrochemical active material, that means that even you have a particle, but inside each atom they carry on one or two electron. That's in this case you increase, increase the energy density. The way we do it is just the, they call it a procedural supercapacitor. The material you use the carbon plus some electrochemical re redox inside. Yeah, I want to follow up on that one. Is there any scope for us to have fuel cell supercapacitor combination vehicle, like a hybrid vehicle? Like you mean so the coupling between fuel cell and the carbon? Yeah, that's the, that's the thing right now. They are trying to do that also one direction, automobile. They try to put a carbon in, you know, the fuel cell and the supercapacitor together. And in this way, you know, the, when you do the, when, when you do the uh, uh, acceleration, you know, start up your car, the, the supercapacitor provides the energy, right? Then the, when you break the, when your car is moving, the fuel cell, right? It's something like this. They they can increase the fuel cell uh, love time. Yeah, in a large application, you need a power, you know, just as I said, you know, the, the supercapacitor, they are charged, you know, charged, discharged in a triangle. Rather than like a fuel cell of a uh, battery, they are just the voltage is smooth, right? You need extra power electronics over there. This, will, this one will cost your, uh, around the parasitic power around 5%, something like this. Yes. So for the maximum, if your case, if you're uh, working with the double layer, you said it's like impossible. Uh, it is very, it's very low, right? Very low, yes. So, uh, you have to put a five, five, yeah, five. So Compared to one hundred fifty, you know, one hundred fifty. Basically, a battery. Your yeah. decision, your decision was to hybridize. 
This they call the procedural procedural supercapacitor. It's a mixed mixed you know the double layer and uh, uh, and the redox material. In this case, you can reach that. And then the proportion of this mixture is more towards the battery. Uh, not necessary. Not necessary. Depend on your. Yeah, what kind of material? You, some better material, uh, high energy, uh, you know, very energy density, very high, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why well, I, 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 I give you, yeah, simple things. You know, you know, uh, your, uh, for example, your cell phone, right? Your cell phone, if you work every day, you know, you just uh, deep discharge. Then uh, the deal is, is almost, uh, you know, finished. Then you charge, that's called a deep, deep discharge, right? Deep charge, this. Then for lithium ion battery, if you do this way, maybe, you know, 300 times gone. But if you charge, every time you charge, discharge 20%, then you charge 20% every time, you can, your battery can last, you know, maybe 2,000, 3,000 times. That's why, you know, lead acid battery. You know your car, uh, let us better. Why you can use the eight years? But uh, because every time you start up, you only use the ar around 10 or 20 percent your energy. Then you, you charge it. Supercapacitor rule is to control your deep. They are not let your your two you know to charge you know the too deep charge or discharge. Yeah, the buffering the things. This gentleman. <laughs> it's, it's me. Father looks much younger than now, right? <laughs> this is the 2000, uh, uh, 2000, 2011, two, uh, 2000. When I work in, uh, in Berlin, right, we have a joint project with, uh, with uh, Dama Chrysler. Develop a DMFC, uh, uh, they call it go-car, scooter. That's the DMFC powered, you know, the, uh, fuel cell powered uh, scooter. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions. We will let's thanks speak again. Thank you, thank you.